hi it's karen the weekend craftaholic welcome back to part two of my craft room tour for 2021 this is focusing on my little cricket area as you can see here i did post this oh about six months ago so it hasn't changed much since then but i have expanded quite a little bit so i just wanted to give you a quick run through as i'm doing the rest of my craft room so apologies for any wobble i'm using my iphone for this and i hope the sound quality is good but you can see first of all i have got this ikea pegboard as well as the alex unit from ikea and this is great for storage and also for putting my little cricket machine on so this is a cricket maker and i made this little vinyl cover so if you're interested in this check out my etsy store i do sell these as well i like being able to see through them and um, obviously i love having the dust cover on it but I love it still being able to see this in my craft room I don't use these little pockets for much so I'm not worried about losing any storage from that and all I've got in there actually is a little bit of foil for sharpening my blade and that's about it um, but I'll start with the side here because the side of this Kallax unit I do use this to store my mats so these are the 12 by 12 mats and I've just got quite a few so the command hooks do hold quite a few mats they're quite strong so these are a great way for me for storing them. And then I recently bought the We Are Memory Keepers magnetic foil um, mat, you should say. So these sit on top of these mats, but it saves you having to use tape and tape down when you're foiling. So these magnetic strips are super strong and it's a lot quicker as well, I find, as well as a lot less waste. So I've got a new hook for that. I'm going to quickly move you to the other side of this Kallax unit because this is where I store my 12x24 mats. So you can see here this is where the longer ones go just zoom out a little bit and i don't use them as often so it's not a problem that they're on the other side of this unit but i do like being able to store them flat and having them on these command ducts are a great way for doing it this is also where i have my little um, easy press as well as well as the mat so i just keep them here obviously i don't keep it plugged in but i do have a little socket down here i'm going to cover off this side of the craft room next this is my little sewing corner but you can see this is where I can easily plug it in if I need to. And I'll just quickly talk about the pegboard first. This, I know this is popular with a lot of people. This is quite a small size. I wish I'd have bought two of them now because they would have fitted on quite easily if I'd have moved them across slightly. But it holds all my tools, as you can see. They're in with easy reach of my desk, which I love. Um, this is the Cricut tape. And I've got also got purple tape, which is what I was using for, um, you know, when your mats don't stay sticky. I was using that just to hold down vinyl and so on. The other thing that I was using when my mat wasn't too sticky is this pixie spray. So I got the purple tape and the pixie spray in a little bundle I think from Amazon. So that's why I keep that here. I've also got my surface cleaner, my alcohol. This was only $2 from Bunnings. So before I do anything, I obviously spray that. And then the other thing I keep here is just this baby powder. So that's really useful if you can't really see your weeding on your vinyl. It helps you see that a little bit better. Pop that back. And on this next one, these are all my fabric quill pens. So if you saw my fabric quill video, you'll know all about those. And this is some other videos I've done. Again, we're memory keepers. These are the singe quill i've got glue quill and some bleach pens as well so keep those in that little rainbow tub and then i have my brayer my Irma etch which i love for etching and then these are all the cricut pens as well as my little um exacto knife i'm not really sure what they call it but that is super sharp i do like that and then i keep my little scraper down here as well and then you can see here peeking i've got a couple of cricut cuties I got this first one from a mystery box and then this one came from the Australian Craftathon earlier this year. The other supplies that I use is this clear glaze. This is just to make things waterproof. And then I've also got this undercoat, which I've not used yet. But that's to make mats. So there'll be a video coming soon on that once I finally get around to making one. Okay, now I only have two drawers dedicated to Cricut in this Alex unit. Um, this is all my quill stuff, so I've got the foil quill, I've got all the adapter pens. This is still in its packet because this is a freehand one that I've not had a chance to use yet, but I will show you that when I do come to use it. And then these are just some bits and bobs. This is great for weeding, you just, I think it's meant to be a nail polish holder, but you put it on your hand and then as you're weeding you can just pop the little bits in. And then just some jewellery basics and some extra 
clip for the pegboard, some more tape that I just used for masking off, some spur blades. I did used to keep my blades in here, but let me just quickly show you that I've recently moved it because in the design studio they have got a little template now to make this inside your drawer. So I've moved the couple of extra blades that I do have into here instead. So I think that looks good. That was just made using craft foam. This little tray just full of little bits of odds and ends, mainly transfer tape, but also some little bits as well of vinyl and so on that I can use. And that is that little tray. And I've also got underneath here just this speedball print press. So this again, I can put stencil on and then I can use fabric paint to um, make an impression on a t-shirt, for example. So that's what that's for. And then I've got a few Cricut rolls, which I've kept in here. Um, along with my press and seal. Um, some of them are these infusible inks. These are mainly the ones from Mystery Boxes or the Craftathon box that I got and just not got around to using them. A couple of them I did buy and I've also got my extra foiling ones here as well. Um, as they're just stacked on top of one another. And some strong bond at the front. I don't really like keeping them in the rolls though. Um, so what I did get, I'll just quickly show you, this first cube is all Cricut as well. So I got these from Crafty Storage in Queensland. So this has got all my paper stuff in, but this one has got all my 12 by 12 Cricut stuff. This top one's full of all my craft board. Then I've got the faux suede. Then I've got chipboard pieces again from Cricut on that. This one is acetate as well as some of these fuse pockets. Um, what else do we have? Oh, this is my probably most popular one, my non-permanent vinyl. I use that an awful lot. And I do keep this some of the bigger scraps here as well. This is my transfer tape. This is what I got off Amazon. I love it. It's not as sticky as the Cricut one, so that's good. And then I've got some premium vinyl here that I've kept on a separate drawer, um, printable vinyl, and I've got matte and glossy versions. What else do we have? Oh, my HTV heat transfer vinyl, and then some holographic iron-on, as well as some adhesive foil. So these are all like the little mixed bag of things at the end. Some more premium vinyl, this time mosaics, and some more foils. And then lastly, we have got the felt as well that I got from the Crafticon pack. So all my Cricut supplies are in there, all nice and neat. I really like it that way, as well as the drawers are good for storage. So you can see if you've got the Alex drawers, the, the rolls do fit quite nicely in there as well. And that is my little Cricut crafting corner. So I like having everything close to hand. This is my desk area, so it's nice and close near that. I normally use the maker straight on the desk. I've got plenty of space for it. If I do need to use one of the longer mats, the 24 inch, I just move the Cricut maker onto the desk and uh, do it that way. So it's got enough room at the back. But normally I just pull this forward as I'm using it. And then there's plenty of room at the back for the mat to come out. I've got these little cutting mats as well that I just keep on here in case I need them as well. And that is it. So that is part two of my craft room tour. Very short and sweet cricket corner. If you've got any questions, just let me know in the comments. Otherwise, please check my next video, which is going to be all about my sewing corner.